Hey, what's going on out there? This video is about the extreme exhaust fan that I designed to help cool off that RV fridge of yours. Okay, here we go. This is all about the extreme fan vent, exhaust vent for the uh, back of your absorption type refrigerator. My name's Greg, and I'm the creator of Good Old RVing and I'm gonna get right into this if you see in the diagram on the left it says the minimum height between the very bottom of the lower vent and the bottom of the top vent should be a certain dimension I think it's 66 inches or something like that well if you look at the picture on the right you can see my tape measure hanging down off the side of the RV and the next frame you'll see that it's only 54 and a half inches and so obviously right there there's an issue now if you look back on the left you'll see that the uh, certified vent kit for this refrigerator does not list an upper side vent it lists a roof vent and a lower side vent and so obviously there's an issue this refrigerator should have never been put into a slide out because there's no way they could put a roof vent on it. So moving right along, I thought, okay, well, let me brainstorm and try to figure this out. So I found this uh, solar vent, and it's supposed to be for a roof vent, but I tried to make it work for my side vent, and obviously it wasn't strong enough. And so this, my friend, is the solar cooling fan that I had to take out of there. I thought it was open, but it would. When it got too hot, it just didn't do anything for it. Way too small. So I just wanted to share that with you. And then I got these two lower vents. There's no room to actually get them up in behind the refrigerator because it's so tight in there. So this is the closest I can mount them. And so they're directly under facing up. This is what I ended up building right here. This is my extreme vent. Fan vent. And I am going to tell you what it involved to put this together. First, I had to get a vent because bringing mine home from the dealer, the vent flew off somewhere. By the time I got home, it was no longer there. And so, first, I had to buy a vent. This is the fan. It's a actually a radiator cooling fan, and. Uh, as you can see there, depending on the size of the fan, will depend on how much CFM it, it uh, puts out. And so mine is either a push or a pull fan, depending on how I set it up. But you could change the blades to do either or. These uh, these specifications for the fan, they're not necessarily for my fan, but they are all 8.8 .8 amps. They're all 12 volt. It's the size in the CFM that is could be different. I just uh, compared them all. And then I had to find a way to keep rain from getting in there. So I found this uh, hood scoop and it seemed to fit perfect. And then my first attempt to try and to regulate this fan speed, I bought this and it failed it burnt up it wasn't strong enough for the current and so i kept the box of that and i bought this which i'm currently using today and i modified it to fit into that box and there it is right there and so just a reminder don't forget to subscribe or like um Push the button on the bottom right corner. This is my fan. As I start to build it, I cut out the inside of the vent. And later I'll cut out the front. There's the back side looking the other direction. You can see how I cut it out so it sits flat. So it's not grabbing air from outside and just recirculating it to the outside. It's, it's definitely pulling it from the inside. I use Lexon and I put that over the top of the vent to because I had to redo the entire vent openings 
And then there's a couple tools that I use to do my cutting with. And there's the fan. Not sitting in anything. So. What I used is I used uh, plastic epoxy. Two part uh, adhesive. And you rough up the mating sides. Put the adhesive down clamp them together so that adhesive spreads really good and uh, it, it works it works and there's the piece of Lexon that I had right there and since I had everything apart I said why not make flying insect screens and so I cut and measured they're 21 inches long by 3 inches wide and at the ends you have to kind of clip them to where you bend them they'll sit tight and so um, I did those and it just so happens that's the same dimensions for the other RV I did also. And so it's probably pretty standard. Um, maybe not for every one of them but a lot of them. And again with these I use that same epoxy to uh, glue them in place. And I'm starting to get it together right here. You can see the screens are all in. I got the fan on there. Then here's the scoop. I also put a screen in the scoop so nothing could fly back when the fan's not on and get inside that way. So everything has a screen on it. And I measured how deep the scoop was because DOT does have a, a lawn. Open that up a little bit. I drilled the holes in there so that hot air in the back has an opportunity to be sucked out of there. So, uh, I'm also pulling this back down where it was, if I can. Where that's blocking where you see my hand go in the curve there, behind it, mm -hmm. that's the entire top of the refrigerator. Okay. Now it's where it was. Now that heat could be diverted out. Okay. And that's where the sensor is, right back over there. You see in the far so left the in the back, in. that little silver thing sticking Actually, through the yeah, walls of the sensor. It's sticking out enough heat, but we'll see if that is holding any back at the same time. Okay. And there it is, all finished up. Ready to be installed right there. And here's my test. Nothing but the suction of that fan is holding that paper against the vent. That's the lower vent right there. And you can see how I've modified the box so that new um, thermostatic control can sit right inside there. And before I got the thermostatic control, I just had an on-off switch. That's that red switch right below it. And then that's the size socket I used to uh, hook it up to the circuit board on the refrigerator. The power went under that white um, connector. Then the ground went under that screw or the nut where I have the socket on. That's the schematic for the uh, thermostatic control. And you can see that it, it could handle up to 20 amps. Okay, I'm just showing you, this is how loud the microwave is. And this is how loud the exhaust fan is. And in my opinion, from just being here, the exhaust fan is quieter than the microwave. To the inside. 
Now let's go see what it sounds like outside. Might need to hurry because it's already cooling it down out there pretty fast. Okay, and this is what it sounds like outside. So basically, just like a car pulling up next to you on a sunny day, because that's what it is, a radiator cooling fan for a car, for a small car. And so that's what it'll sound like outside. And so that concludes the, the uh, build for my extreme exhaust fan for the back of a absorption type refrigerator in a slide out. I hope that you gathered some good information out of this and if you have any questions, want to build one for yourself, don't hesitate, leave a comment and I'll get back with you with any kind of detailed information you'd like to have. And so I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget, like and subscribe. The subscribe should be in the bottom right or left corner and uh, if you want other want to see other videos I've put out click on one of the uh, click on one of the pictures up at the top right or left corner I always forget where I put those darn things when I put these on YouTube so videos are on the top subscribes on the bottom likes on the very bottom so and then the comments is on the bottom so yeah enjoy and i hope that your refrigerator stays strong for you have a great day